Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. I got a big show lined up, special guests here in the studio, but first, Take a look at our weather, brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard and his hardworking crew, taking care of our everyday comfort needs, and fairly more comfortable today, it's only going to get up to 87 and low of 78, just flip-flop those two numbers and there we have it, about 9 degrees difference is all, but like we're talking about, it's that feels like temperature that really, that really gets to us. And here's another interesting thing on the weather this morning, the temperature, the water temperature at the end of the pier dropped down to 77.8. Four. They haven't been that low in a good while, and it, it's going to be, uh, it's really interesting that, there's, that it's did like that. That's a real cool snap coming in. Our river reading is brought to you by Panama City Coca-Cola. Take a look at the Appalachian Cola by Bluntstown. We're looking at, actually, 9.8. It's, going, it's dropping out now. It got pretty high pretty quick. And the Choctaw Caraville, 7.7, .7 is about to peak out, and it'll be dropping, provided we don't get much more rain the next day or two. So the weekend looks like we have some dropping water on our river systems. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at a good tide today. The high tide is right here at 6.54 this morning, and low is 6.22 tonight. So it's going to be, it's going to be going out for a good while. Let's take a break, and we'll be right back with our guest. Welcome back and welcome to our guest this morning. Good Danny morning. Glad <laughs> Good morning. to have you and we've got so much to talk about so we're just going to start. First of all, let's start about fishing to start with. I always ask when what happened when guests come in. My first question usually, have you been doing any fishing lately? <laughs> and a lot of them say, yeah. <laughs> and they ask me, I said, well, no, I've been doing a TV show. So <laughs> tell, tell them what kind of, what you've been up to. Well, we've just been busy. Uh uh, working like everybody, but we are cutting out time here and there. We've been doing some catfishing. It's my thing now. I'm kind of getting into and really enjoying that, and uh, yep. having a little bit of success with it. So well, listen, uh, it's I, eating good. <laughs> you got me a picture here. This is this is uh, this is a good little catch the other day. Yeah, that was. Uh, let me think about Let's that. See. That was on the Appalachian River. It's yep. been a few weeks ago, but uh, we've been actually doing better. I, I forget to take pictures a lot of times, but I know. we've been doing better than that with size and with uh, kit, so yeah. we've really been enjoying it. You know, uh, it's, it's interesting, you, you say you haven't done much catfish and all of a sudden you want to try it out and uh, and you went on YouTube and saw some things. Yeah, there's hey, a couple really good shows on there, uh, professional guides put on. They, they cut a lot of the myth out. There's a lot of uh, myth about baits and stuff to use and you come to find out that it's really uh, it's not that hard at all. So we 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 complicate it. We make it overcomplicated. That, that's by exactly right. Trying something new and and uh, Bill Shields. I hope you're watching this morning on his catfish. Uh, remember how Bill gets his lemon chicken and all kind of stuff. He mm -hmm. put these concoctions together, puts it in the refrigerator for a week and all. I get tickled at him. But you you just had sort of a simple bait you use. Right. Uh, there's there's one I particularly like, and I don't know if we can make name names. Well, I don't name names. This sort of basic what it but, is. Uh, uh, watching him, he's done several, several tests. He's got video on top of video of running tests, and uh, we've just been using skinless, boneless uh, chicken yeah. uh, breast. The breast meat seems to hang on to the hook better, but it, we've been having a lot of success with that, and, and he's done a lot of, I mean, when he, this, this particular guide goes, he'll put out like 10 rods at a time, Yeah. and he'll have cut bait, and he'll have chicken, and he'll have, uh, it, he even did one with shrimp. I always heard shrimp was supposed to be so great for catfish. Mm -hmm. It got the least amount of interest out of any of them. Oh. The catfish consistently uh, were biting on the uh, fresh uh, chicken, so uh, he, he always says it's, yeah. a, it's an easy way. You want to go fishing, you don't want to put all this stuff together, you just mm -hmm. stop by a store on your way out, gas up your boat, grab some chicken breast and go. Yeah, but uh, we've been trying that and it's, we've had a lot of success with it. That's interesting. That, that's interesting because there's so many different things. I, I can remember the old timers, and including my dad, they would always use Catawba worms. Yeah. Well, they're hard to find now. You can't hardly find them you at all. You can't. And so uh, a lot of substitutes have been coming in. This, I love talking about catfishing this time of year. We haven't talked about it uh, so far this summer about getting out there. Uh, you can you can get on the fish on the bottom there and uh, different kind of rigs, how you just put a lead weight on it mm -hmm. and just fish the bottom. 
Yeah. That, that's all we're doing, and there's more exotic rigs you can do, but yeah. we're, our area, you know, we fish the Apalachicola River, Chipola River, and yeah. uh, we've been moved in to start to do a lot in Deer Point Lake, but it's yeah. uh, all those areas, if you can get where there's not a bunch of ground cover on the bottom, just that simple you, line you want and way sandy point out. bottom. Yep. And go sandy, bottom. sandy bottom. And you use your electronics too to put the fire. Oh yeah, well it, that that's one of the biggest things I, I've learned. I'm I've always had bottom machines and, and nice ones, but I've never really paid attention to how to get the most out of them. I'm just not an electronics savvy guy. But uh, that's one of the other things that, you know, I've really been paying attention to and so it's it's allowed me to become more successful because finding where they're at and uh, and, and locating the difference between when you're really looking at fish and when you're looking at something that's a, a ghost image, you know, so. Yeah, no, that's a good point. So many of us get these nice machines and all and, and don't use them to a full extent. I, I'm guilty of it, I know some of y'all are too, so that's, that's good to see. How many poles you put out? Uh, I, I usually put out uh, four. Okay. And uh, I have done as many as six, but with the size of my boat, it just is kind of jumbled up and, you can't yeah. help when you catch one if they foul two or three of the others. So I found yeah. four is a good mix. That, that's, that's really good. And of course, you take them home and fry them up pretty, pretty Oh yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, our family loves that. I mean, I, I would just assume good catfish as a grouper or oh, snapper or anything. I mean, it's readily available, yeah. a lot less trouble, cheaper in it. Yeah. And uh, you know, with success, yeah. you're eating yeah. good in the neighborhood. So again, this is a good time of year for catfishing. Summertime catfishing, and uh, you can do it late in the afternoon, or early in the morning, and that's right. I got to do it in the middle of the day. That's right. It's too hot, but uh, well, that's good. I'm so glad you caught some, and uh, keep me posted on some more. Though, we'll do that. Okay, right, we're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We, you know, we've been talking about, do, talking about doing our summer sweepstakes. Uh, we Wild Wiggler Bait and Tackle gave us a, just a box full of tackle to give away to our viewers. And uh, here at Fox 28, they gave us, uh, Donna gave us a bag to put them in. So this is a bag of tackle for our summer sweepstakes. And I want to, we're going to go through all of it. I said, I want to show you, I want to thank Gail last night for having the patience to put this together because I sort of spread it out and I just, <laughs> I got all, Russ, I said, oh, I can't put all this stuff together. So she, she put one in each bag. So you can see, plus it's going to be a panhandle outdoor. Look, she wrapped in bubble wrap. A mug, okay, we've got a mug in here, and just a ton of tackle. I don't want to go through all of them, but uh, Z, uh oh, big bite baits. Uh, <laughs> hold up some of those, Daniel. How about a voodoo shrimp? And just a ton. Flicker shad. Look at that, bunny hooks and everything. So that's a. Uh, Okay, some bass lures. One drop down, we'll, we'll get it. So we're going to give away a bag today and during this break. And we'll come back from, uh, after the break, we're going to give away the second bag, which has the same same stuff in it. A lot of little spinners we talked about before. So if you go buy Wee Wall Wiggler Bait and Tackle, you'd be sure to thank Richard and the family for giving this to our viewers. And uh, we thank Donna here at Fox 28 for this bag. Here. So, all right, so Daniel, I'm going to let you draw so they. So they'll be mad at you if they don't make it. Okay, the winner <laughs> of this summer season. That'd be day. normal, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, and the winner is, let's see, all the way from Bayou, George, Margaret Sherman. Margaret Sherman. So we're going to put your name on this. My neck of the woods. Yeah, it might be your neighbor up there. <laughs> all right, I'm going to put it right back Congratulations, here. Margaret. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's some good stuff. All right, so. Uh, and we're, like I said, we'll give away another bag in a minute. We're going, we've got a lot more tackle to give away, so we've got to get our summer sweepstakes going. Uh, Danny, we're talking about boats and all, and, and we're, you were talking the other day. Let me see. I, I, I saw this, I thought about you. Uh, okay, this boat right here. This is a Tupelo <laughs> barge, if you will, but this is in your neck of the woods, sort of, on the Apalachicola River in Gulf County, Florida around 1960. This came out of Florida archives. But we're talking about a Tupelo honey, and I'm looking at this, and what, you know, I'm looking at when they built this, you always think about these old timers building these boats out of necessity. That's right. So what, what can you say about this kind of situation? <clears throat> they work. <laughs> I love how they built like a tower, almost like a tree stand. I, I laugh when I saw it. They used that for deer hunting during the, during the winter and, and in, the, in the springtime, haul that two-plug honey. But those barrels, 
have honey in them. Yep. And that that was such a big business uh, at the time, and and uh, it, it, it's hard. They're, they're, they're telling me now these two blow honey folks. They're telling me now they're they're having really having trouble getting enough Tupelo honey. Have you heard that? I have, and uh, I think that the biggest problem is we have such a bee shortage, and uh, <laughs> we'll get into that. But yeah. There's very definite ideas as to why that is, and yeah, uh, and uh, some people say the even one one guy was I read the other day said he felt like with all this stuff people are spraying on flowers and all and, and all that and he said that's a, having an effect and all kind of theories behind it, but uh, it's definitely and then, then a, that's a the disease. thing I remember in the summertime anywhere you had, you always had bees in your yard and in the grass. Now you don't have them anymore. Yeah. And uh, I've talked to a couple, because I love honey, and I, I, I we use a lot of honey. Yeah. And talking to a lot of the uh, apiary people, you know, it's like, you know, they, there shouldn't be a general consensus. There's something more sinister than that going on. So we'll, yeah. we'll see. Time will tell. But it's, uh, it's, it's a horrible thing because honey is such a medicinal food. Oh, and it's no, as it, natural as natural. it gets. And, uh, yeah. Well, and you look at the price, and people complain about the price of Tupelo honey. It skyrocketed. But it's because they're not, they're, yeah, they're not much. making much money off of it. The margin no. is like that. And I, I know I know some people do it, and they they work. That, that, it's a lot of work. A lot of work, and just to be able to get it, I'm willing to pay that kind of price just to get natural uh, too. honey from our Panhandle area. That's right. Me too. And so, so people don't realize the benefits of it. You know, if you um, people who have a lot of outdoor allergies, when you get honey from your local area, it actually has natural suppressants in it that mm -hmm. help protect you from those allergies. That's true. So, I, I put I put in my coffee every morning. I, I love. I, I'll sometimes just get a big tablespoon of it yeah. just because it's, it does so much yeah. for you and it does so much for our health. Yeah. It's really amazing. It's, it's one of the greatest gifts we got. So I know. I love put it on a little butter biscuit, too. Nothing wrong with that. Now listen, I, the, other, the other day I was going to tell the Clark family I had a, had a still, I got a little bit of that cane syrup left from the, from the harvest last fall. So uh, I put some on the, they made some hot biscuits the other, the other night and I just, I just poured it on there. It just, it, yes, it was sir. good. It was just, again, that's Florida Panhandle, sugar cane, and, and grind out the cane syrup, and it's it, it special to me. We grew up on that stuff. I, you know? I know. It's just a staple. <laughs> so listen, we got we got a lot of pictures, but one of the things, uh, when Daniel comes on, when I talk about boats, anything going on in the boating world we need to know about? It? You, you've been busy doing a lot of... We've been doing a lot of stuff, uh, you know, I just... Uh, if there's anything in the world I could probably uh, encourage the viewers, you know, safety, uh, especially involve what just happened with this guy that was scalloping, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just uh, be very careful because people yeah. today are so selfish and yep. so self-involved they don't pay attention to what's going on around them. That and, that, uh, that is so true. And people pay for that. Yeah, well, had, had innocent all, bystanders. That's right. I had Officer Travis Bassford on yesterday. He was talking about. Uh, here in the fourth, they made 13 BUI arrests around Crab Island in just that one area. And, uh, and we'll talk about that, but not just the alcohol, but like I said, people are just selfish and don't care. And then some just flat out, uh, well, I don't want to use the word on air, but they, they don't do smart things. So anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Here, oh, Scott Wynn, he saw, now he said he saw this great white shark. It's about 12 to 13 foot long. Scott, I believe him now, he's a good fisherman. So he didn't get a good picture of it, but anyway, the great white's out there. Uh, <laughs> I had to share this with you. Fishing like this <laughs> should also affect That's your pretty funny. I see this a lot. And, and you got to just help them out, folks. Yep, just turn it over, okay? Just turn it over. it be okay. And, uh, but uh, uh, we've seen that. Charles Weir, one of my former students, this is good. We've talked, Daniel, all summer long. They've been catching Wahoo. And Charles I know. Is I mean, some big wahoo, and look, they weighed this thing. I'm gonna zoom in on the weight. 72.8 pounds, folks. That's huge for wahoo. And here's a picture. I'll show you how big it is. <laughs> that is that is a fine one right there. So uh, anyway, good job on on that. Beautiful fish. Mike McGraw, one of my buddies here. <laughs> okay, our world, our world represented in this picture. And that has a lot, you can say a lot about that. So uh, I know uh, 
we were talking about trailers and everything. And uh, well, let's take a break now. We'll come back and we're gonna give away another bag and then talk about some of these boat trailers. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Today we're Daniel Cole. If you have any kind of boating questions or the quality of the boat, or anything, just in general, give Daniel a call. You you know a little bit about boats, and you can just a you know, little, a little bit. It's been a lifetime doing it on the water, so we're glad to have him as part of the Panhandle Outdoors team. Let's take a look at our fishing game time today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Our time this morning, 8:23 to 10:23. This afternoon or later, well tonight really, 8.48 to 10.48 and the days are getting a little shorter now. I don't know if you can notice, I, I can't, but technically they are getting a little bit shorter. Uh, we were talking about all the things to do and we got scallop season coming up and in our area, we mentioned it yesterday, but then oh, Carabell East has it, been open and we got a picture of the other day, folks. It's been, it's been some good scalloping. Check this out over in Carabell. Uh, Jason Klaus, uh, they got a limit there. That looks good, don't it? Then the next day, they got another limit. How about that? And that's a lot of scallops. That is. That, I'm sure a lot of people, one, two, three, four, probably a whole big old couple of family doing it, but that's a good sign on the scallops and all. So we we just got our fingers crossed for St. Joe Bay. And we're about, we're exactly uh, 32 days out from St. Joe Bay opening. 32 days out. I got a little countdown, I'll go. All right, let's give away another bag of tackle, Daniel. Uh, okay. Let's see. Here we, we got right here. So this same, it's the same stuff in here, but we're just doing a, a, a double giveaway today because we got a lot to give away, so we want to give away uh, this bag here. So Daniel, draw out a name again so you can reach it okay. Yeah. It's hard to get to sometimes. There you go. Okay. And this winner from all the way from Ebro. We'll get him. Coming in from out of town, Leonard Dean. Okay, Leonard Dean. So I'm gonna put you back here also, Leonard. And so we'll come by Fox 28 Studios here at 700 block of West 23rd Street. Donna is our, uh, takes care of all of that. And, uh, ring, the, ring the bell and she'll come in the door and uh, is right here behind the desk. And she'll greet you with a big smile. Talking about, you know, surprises and all. You know, one of the snakes that I really detest is a cottonmouth water moccasin. <laughs> uh, I always have. And I run across this picture, and, and what, the biggest thing when they surprise you, you always think about a cottonmouth being around the water and all that, which they are, as they go around the water, you're looking for them, but sometimes they'll hold up in some places. Mm -hmm. And this particular, this particular picture right here, okay, this is a, in a, some kind of ATV or outdoor vehicle, and they saw, the person saw the the snake in there, so they knew there was, there was a snake in there. And you, you got stuff outside, and even these kids' uh, little toys and everything. So they did further investigation, and they found out the snake turned around to greet them. That's not a that's not a good picture right there. That that's sort of scary. And then, folks, they actually found when they opened it up and got opened up uh, up underneath the fender well. That's where they were. They were bedded in there. Is so that one or two? That's two cottonmouth, big cottonmouth snakes, two. Mm. So anyway, well, I, I want to just, just warn you because we talk about snakes a lot on the show and the little copperheads especially, but these cottonmouth, they just have a bad disposition. They, they, they don't, they don't, you know, I've never really been attacked by a snake except that one time when I've talked to them, it was a cottonmouth coming straight at me. I never will forget it. I think I was about in my early 20s and, uh, and if you're in their territory, they'll come get you. Have you had, you had much experience with snakes? I have. And? And? <laughs> you know, I'll be honest with you. I uh, was up uh, Econfina Creek one time, two times. And I got off on the bank uh, because we had people in the boat and had to go take care of business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I heard ch -ch 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 -ch. And I looked down and I was standing right beside uh, Cotton Mouse both times. Mm. And they weren't coiled up or ready to strike, but they were tapping their tail just like a rattlesnake will to rattle to let me mm -hmm. know they would be there. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've been very fortunate, mm -hmm. you know, to see that and was able to step away. They weren't aggressive, but yeah. I've heard some stories that they they can be really territorial, really aggressive. So yeah, I, I was I, lucky. Yeah, I've witnessed that. Like I say, but most of the time they will sort of warn you and try to get out of the way. But uh, there's something that's a very strong bite, and that's. I forget the statistics, but the rattlesnake and cottonmouth, the fatalities from those two are, are worse than any other snake in America. 
<laughs> so uh, I've got about two minutes left. We got some catfish, and for the rest of the summer, are we gonna do some serious fishing, or? I hope so, but you know, work schedule what it is. It's uh, we'll we'll do our best, but we 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 stay so busy work-wise that I don't have to really slice and dice. You know. The nice thing about fishermen is that typically if they can schedule their time when the you know weather and everything is right, they get so much more. But in our case, when we can go, that's when we can go. So that's that's true. And speaking of boats, I thought about this the other day. You know, it's been almost right at five years since Eric and Michael had all the boat damage and all of those boats that they've tried to resell and all of them. So they sort of got out of the market now. I think about that the other day. You know, I th I think some of them have, and then some of them haven't. But, okay. And, and so uh, it, it just doesn't matter because we have, you know, we've had storms in Orange Beach, we've had storms in South Florida. Yeah, that's and true. Boats tend to just circulate, so you just got to really be diligent and pay attention. I know we had a hell storm here about a month ago, and it affected a lot of vehicles. Did you mm -hmm. see any damage on any boats or was it probably no? Because I guess the fiberglass and all the one that it, yeah, it yeah, typically bounces off. Yeah, that's that's interesting because there were a lot of cars got beat up on that. That's right. And, uh, well, Danny, we gotta uh, we gotta wrap it up, buddy. And, uh, send me some more pictures of catfish, and <laughs> hopefully we'll have some more soon. I know, and I, it's cool to see, like you said, somebody like this that works hard, but yet you still take the time off to go fishing, and that's what we encourage y'all to do, and and uh, just find time to go. And I'm talking to myself as much as anybody. You got got to find time to go and just go do it. That's right. And uh, try to go early and, and go late. So uh, we're gonna try to do some this this weekend. So. Anyway, so thank you for coming on, buddy. <laughs> thank you for having and, me. And those two names you drew there, they thank you also for the, for the tackle. <laughs> Congratulations. Don't come by and pick it up. So, folks, we always appreciate you watching Pan Out Outdoors. So, uh, thank you for the feedback y'all sent us. It's encouraging to read these, and uh, we appreciate it. Do something good for someone else today. Have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.